Hi everyone, this is Yara Stark here. Welcome to another interview with an expert. Today on the line, I have a new friend named John Jonas, who came to my attention actually through a referral from uh, some other people you may know, Adam and Alan from Niche Profit Classroom, who uh, I interviewed Adam uh, several months ago, and he was uh, one of the most popular interviews I've done, and that was on the topic of niche marketing. And uh, the reason why John has come to my attention is the outsourcing aspect of it. Now, outsourcing is increasingly becoming, I think, the most popular subject I keep getting asked by a lot of my students because they're constantly hitting roadblocks in areas where they really should be outsourcing. So I'm basically getting as many people as I can to explain how they outsource, you know, where they outsource, and, and what they do so that we can hopefully help as many people who listen to calls like this um, get past their roadblocks through using outsourcing. So. John, thank you for joining me on the call. Yeah, good to be here. I, I appreciate it. So the first thing uh, I'd like to do is just get to know you a bit better. So uh, you're obviously an internet marketer. Uh, how did you actually get to this path? Like, did you go to university and have the typical story where you had a nine to five job and hated it, and then moved over to internet marketing, or what's what's your story? So, <laughs> I uh, I'm a little bit different, probably, uh, although probably not much. I graduated from college in in computer science. Um, I am 31 years old. I have three kids who are ages two, four, and six. Um, well planned. After college, <laughs> very, well, very well planned. Two, four, and six. <laughs> <laughs> um, after college, I had a job for eight months. I was doing programming, and um, my only goal during those eight months was to quit my job. I am a terrible employee, <laughs> and. So, you know, I, I was just looking for stuff to, to do. And I, I had a couple different contracting jobs that I was doing. And one of them was kind of longer term. And one of them was pretty pretty well paying, shorter term. And 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 this was right around the time when um, Traffic Equalizer was really big. I don't know if you remember that. Mm, but, I remember that, yeah. Um, I, I started making some money with that and had a couple other opportunities. And, and I, I was able to quit my job. So out of college, I had a job for eight months and um, quit that job and have been online ever since. That was in 2004, early 2004 when I quit. And so I've been doing it ever since. Um, now I assume when you had that, that first, uh, well, I, don't, I don't call it a business, but when you were using Traffic Equalizer to make money. Just for people who don't know, what, the basic of Traffic Equalizer, what was that? That was a... It was a... Uh, it created it automatically generated websites for you and you it built you built huge websites in like one minute and then just put them on a server and Google would index them and they would send you traffic and you put ads on it right and it it was I mean, it was really like a kind of a get rich quick scheme that actually worked <laughs> for a while right <laughs> yeah it's the nature so, of the get rich quick schemes they only last for a very short period of time don't they yeah yeah, so you know, and having a computer science background really helped me, where I was able to go and kind of change some stuff with it, and we built a lot of websites, really automated, and you know, made some good money with it. But then, you know, I knew it wasn't going to last, and so I started moving on and continuing my education in this internet marketing world. So that's kind of my where I got started. Okay, so what happened? I'm assuming when you you were running that business, it was just you as a, a one man show. Is that right? Oh yeah, and and. Doing that, I, I actually, this is kind of when I realized that I couldn't hire people in the U.S. to, to work with me because uh, what I was doing then was so simple that the first thing they would do was quit. <laughs> <laughs> too, too boring for them, was that it? No, they'd go quit and do it on their own. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was Occupational too, hazard, huh? <laughs> it was too easy. It was, way, it was way too easy and, you know, it didn't last for very long. Yeah. Um, but but you know then I, I started trying other things and you know I tried I tried a, a creating a real estate website and totally failed miserably at it and tried creating um, gosh it's been so long I don't even remember remember what I what else I tried but I remember failing miserably at a couple things where it was just like well, I have no idea what I'm doing you know <laughs> yeah the graveyard of websites I think uh, a lot of people have those if they've oh. been doing this for a few years. Oh, so many, so so many of them. So, so what was the, uh, I guess, the ne the next successful project you had, uh, you know, online? And let's start moving towards how you, you know, came to the realization that you needed more people. 
So I um I I did I built keywordtopia.com which was a keyword tool based on using Google AdWords it was a tool for doing that and and it, it was okay you know I mean obviously I had really big dreams for it and and it never got really big and I didn't again I didn't really know what I was doing but but it was around this time so here here's kind of a bigger story the guy who created ancestry.com which is the biggest website in the genealogy space um he was teaching a class at BYU where I graduated from, and, and I, had, I had known him, and he asked me to teach one of his classes on search engine optimization, SEO. And, and I, so I was there one day in particular teaching one of his classes, and, um, and another guy was there who was also uh, teaching another day, and he and I were talking afterwards about some of the stuff we were doing, and, and he said something super interesting to me. Uh, we both had really similar goals, and he said, "You know, John, when you're ready to start outsourcing, outsourcing some of this stuff, you should go to the Philippines with it. You know, don't go other places, but go to the Philippines, and you'll have a really good experience." And he gave me a reference to someone where I could hire someone. And um, you know, I was I, I thought about it then, and it was like, you know, that I mean, it sounds good. It's it's um, a little bit more expensive than I want to risk right now. I, I'm a very very conservative person, and I, and Finding out that I was going to pay seven hundred and fifty dollars a month for someone to do some work for me, which you know I didn't really know how good it was going to be or whatever. I didn't know if I'd keep them busy full time. I didn't know if I had enough work. Or I, I, it took me a couple months to kind of take the leap and and hire someone. Um, so you went straight to a full time employee. You didn't sort of get someone to do you know a little bit of project work here and there because you know let's lay out the typical. I guess thought process. This is certainly what happened to me when I started studying what how to outsource. Uh, you know, go to Elance or go to Rent a Coder. You know, have a very specific uh, outcome in mind and and test people on a very small project and you know and then move your way up to a full time employee. Uh, you know, a proper outsourcer. So start out tasking first and then move to to that model. Did you just bypass all of that because of your friend or? No, I. I just found that it was too much for me because I I did that I I did the Elance stuff and the Rent a Coder and get a freelancer and Script Lance and whatever, um, and I just found it was that the the process of doing that was was too much for me to deal with. Uh, I you know I I realized as part of myself just my personality if something if something takes more work to get someone else to do it than for me to do it I won't do it even if it's holding me back. Um, and also, if I don't like doing something, I just won't do it. And I really, really didn't like the process of using Elance. It was it was very emotionally draining for me, and you know, kind of difficult. And so, you know, I, I had been through it um, quite a few times, and you know, had some good experiences and had some terrible experiences. And um, so, I, I just kind of realized, you know, this does not this it doesn't work for me. Um, and you know, I still I I'll still use Elance on rare rare occasions today um, but you know what I guess once I kinda of figured out that I could hire full-time people for really 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 cheap I kinda of never went back to that model okay so before you explain how you did that obviously you have to get yourself into a situation where you can even afford to pay someone 750 a month or you know something around that area you know what business were you running at the time like and had you built it up mostly off your own back like you said, Keywordtopia, was that it? or? I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> you obviously had a few going at the same time, did you? <laughs> yeah, I, I had a couple things. I mean, I, I can think of a couple things. I know that I had a couple different ebooks going. You know, Adam, Adam Short and I have been friends for probably five years now. And um, he and I were doing ebooks way back then, you know, separate, but, you know, we were communicating about it. And I, I know I had a couple ebooks going. And. Um, and, and I know that was part of where I had had the Elance experience, and that's part of why I had stopped creating ebooks. I, I had four ebooks done over a period of time. And I don't remember when, but it was just too much for me to deal with the the work from getting other people on Elance to do stuff and building it and what I, I just found it was too much. Um, so I stopped doing that. I had I, I don't know if I had Keyword Topia at the time. I may have. I'm sure that I had some traffic equalizer sites that were still making me money. I know that I had. I probably still had some contract work that I was doing, um, 
I had some lofty dreams, I'm sure, for some other projects that totally failed. <laughs> but <laughs> so it's yeah, safe I, to say you're you you were uh, you were a niche marketer in a lot of ways, definitely an entrepreneur or an online entrepreneur, and uh, you had lots of different ways to make money, but you weren't necessarily sticking to one market and trying to dominate it or anything with a business like that, were you? No, absolutely not. No, you know, so I was trying to be an entrepreneur and I'm not a very good one. Okay. So what, what happened? Are you still like that today? <laughs> Are you still running multiple websites and multiple niches? Or? I, actually, yes. <laughs> um, but I do very, very little work for each of them or for any of the niches. Or, um, but I, I do have quite a few successful websites today and, and I can talk about a couple of them but um, or maybe maybe one or one or two of them specifically and, and talk about how I do it so okay. well, kind of kind of what well, go ahead well kind of what happened with me was you know I, I, I said that I was I debated on this and, and I, I don't remember what what the sites were that I was doing um, but I debated for a while and I finally hired someone uh, I f hired a programmer and, and you know like I said I was a programmer and um, I, I specifically remember like, gosh, I, I remember it was like a week or two after I had hired the guy. I remember it being the most liberating experience of my life where I hired him and, and all of a sudden there it was like there were two of me uh, where I wasn't doing programming anymore. Because, you know, I don't know if you've ever done any programming. It's all consuming. Like it totally consumes your brain and you can't do anything else. And all of a sudden... I didn't have to think about programming and programming was still getting done, which was a super important part of my business. Um, and, and not only did I find that I had enough work to keep him busy, I had enough work to keep two people busy full time. And that was kind of like when that, – that was like the first real life-changing experience I had with outsourcing where, where I realized, wow, there's way more that's possible here than I thought was possible before. Okay, so this is how I'm interpreting that. Uh, I'm running a software business. Like, let's say most of my income is generated either creating scripts, which I sell online, or, or even give people subscription to make use of, or something like that. And I've got lots and lots of ideas for scripts. Plus, of course, you have to maintain the, the scripts in the software as well. But there's only one of me, so I can only produce you know, a certain number of scripts or main, manage just the ones I've got under me. Uh, so at some point, if I want to expand my business, I'm going to need to get more programmers on board, and that's going to give you more leverage, increase your output, and that's what you did. Uh, I think it even went a little bit further than that for me, where uh, um, being a programmer, I wasn't able to do the marketing tasks that I needed to do, even for one script, right? And uh, so, so it it not yes, in a sense where where. Uh, you know what you said, where I, I was able to go on and work on other things, and that has definitely been the case where I didn't have to be the programmer anymore. But also, I was then able to make the things that I did have start succeeding because I was able to do the things that were most important for that business. Because programming isn't really important for a business usually. <laughs> At least programming doesn't make money. Um, it may develop a product, but sales makes money. You know, marketing makes money. Um, bringing visitors to your website and converting them into sales makes money. Um, adding another feature to the software product doesn't make money. Uh, and, and that was like a really big light for me at that, like a light bulb went off for me when I was able to start actually like implementing the things that I was hearing from other people that you have to do in your business to, to make money. Where before I, I couldn't do those things because I didn't have time because I was doing the programming. Okay, that makes sense. So it's probably a, a great time to, in to introduce, I'm, I'm sure you've heard of it, uh, Rich Sheffern's Internet Business Manifesto. Have you, did you ever get a chance to read that one? I, I didn't. I, I, I know that I glanced through some of it. I didn't read all of it, I, but I know what it is. Right, and you're obviously very familiar with um, Tim Ferriss and the 4-Hour Workweek. Uh, right. Yeah. So, you know, those two people, or, or <laughs> what they represent, sounds exactly like what you're talking about here, the idea that there are certain parts of your business that really give you the leverage and there's certain parts that you should should not be doing, certain areas that you should be doing. So you, you started to realize where 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 was lacking and where you could start inserting other people so that you could step away and do other things. And I'm assuming the next step, of course, was to step away completely or almost completely and you know uh, you spend your time how you want to spend it. So let's um 
Maybe you could take us through even a, a one case study. So this is a great example for a person listening to this who might already be in internet marketing and they're looking to, I think there'll be a few things, you know, they want to increase cash flow, um, they, they might have a business already or they don't have one, whatever the case is, they, they understand that, you know, this makes sense, what you're saying makes complete sense. Have a full-time employee, have more than one full-time employee, pay, a, you know, a small fraction of your cash flow to keep them in your business and rapidly grow what you're doing. So maybe you could uh, explain the entire evolution of one product or a good case study you have for us? Uh, yeah. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll give a, a very recent one and tie it into something we already talked about. Uh, this is one of the more recent things that I did and it, it was so uh, probably mm, six months ago, six or eight months ago, Adam Short and I reconnected again. I'm, I'm going to talk about this one because you're your listeners are very familiar with Adam and Alan's stuff. Adam and I connected again. We hadn't talked probably in two years. Maybe it was a year or something. But we started talking about um, some of the stuff he was doing and some of the stuff I was doing. And and um, he, I, I always loved the model of doing the eBooks. I just didn't like doing the work for it. And I, I had kind of put it in the back of my mind for, for a couple of years. And then when Adam and I talked again, we talked about what they were doing with Niche Profit Classroom. And um, I, I kind of got the idea, you know, first of all, I loved the things that he had developed since, since he and I had last talked about that model. And um, I got the idea that I, I thought that I might be able to outsource the entire thing to the guys that I had working for me. And, um, and, and this was, this was like another leap for me where I, I had had them do other things for me, you know, and they've made me quite a bit of money. Um, uh, but this one, I was going to try and outsource everything. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go through the process of, of, of what I did. Is that, is that kind yeah, of what you're looking for? It, go for it. Okay. So, you know, I got, I, I, I talked with Adam and went through it and it kind of refreshed my mind and, and I had some ideas you know, Adam, that Adam and I brainstormed. And so I create, I, I think I probably created a 45 minute audio explaining the model. Uh, like, here's what we're going to do. You know, we're going to create these eBooks. Here's how they're going to work. I probably showed them one of Adam's sites and probably a couple of my sites that I've had. Cause you know, the sites that I built years ago are still making me money. Um, I just haven't touched them or done anything with them. So they don't make me a lot. Right. So I, I sent them, you know, examples and said, here's how we're going to change these. And here's how we're going to do it better. And here's how we're going to do the research. And, um, you know, here's, here's, here's what we're going to do. And um, I, I know that I also gave them access to uh, Niche Profit Classroom. I think I, uh, you know, like right before they opened it or right after they opened it, whatever, I, I gave my guys access to it to have them go through it. And... Um, so, so then I, I, you know, I knew that they understood the concept, and this is two, two different people that I have who work for me full time in the Philippines. So when I say my guys specifically, this is two of them. Um, I, so they, they, I knew that they understood the concept, um, and and they've been with me for quite a while. So I know that they, you know, they have a pretty good education already. I've given them lots of training, and then and then I said, okay, guys, I want step one. Go do the research. Go do the research how he says, but also I want you to go do these things separate. Um, you know, Adam's money word matrix is, is pretty good, but I, I think there's a couple improvements that, you know, just my personal knowledge, right? And so I said, you know, let go me, do this. Go do the research. One, let me just clarify for people listening who just may not know what Niche Profit Classroom is just briefly. It's essentially finding uh, profitable niches online by analyzing the a number of traffic searching for something versus the number of websites currently ranking for something uh, setting up a website to get in front of that traffic uh, through organic search results so getting high rankings in Google and then that traffic you convert either to sell affiliate products or as John's talking about here selling an ebook that you have written yourself so that's the model you're you're talking about right now right John right yeah. where i'm i'm selling the ebook myself okay. that that was my thing so, um, you know, they, they go out and do all the research and, and I told them at the beginning of this, I want you guys to run this whole business. And so I want you to pick the niches that we're going to write the books about. 
And so they went out and did all the research, and they sent me a huge Google Docs spreadsheet with all the data in it, and they, and, and they said, we should write books about this, this, and this. And I looked at all the data, and they were right. They, <laughs> they had gotten it exactly right. Um, these are the books that we should be writing about, right? So I said, okay, um, go write the book. And one of, one of them specifically is a good writer. And go, go write the book. And, you know, so they, they write, send me a table of contents and, a, and, I, and I'll approve it or change it, whatever. And, and they'll go, they went and wrote the book, right? And this, just so you know, we just, uh, we're, write, we're working on our fifth book right now. So we started doing this. It's probably, it was probably four months ago that we started this. Um, so we're, we're working on our fifth book right now. Uh, the previous four are all done, and, and I'm going to tell you the process of them. And I, I was only actually involved in this process the first time. And I told them that, that I only wanted to be involved the first time, and that they were to do it every other time after this. So um, so they, they went out and wrote the book. And I will tell you that, that you know, I mentioned I had four books written in the past off of Elance. Um, the book that they wrote was probably twice as well written and researched as any of the previous books I had, and probably cost me half as much to five times less, right? Um, you know, just because of the, uh, you know, how cheap this is, right? And the other books were written on Elance. I don't know if I said that. Um, so, so then they, they wrote the book. Uh, one of them was, well, one of them was writing. The other one went out and set up the website. Uh, then the other one wrote, I, I, sent, I sent her some, copywriting information that I had on how to write sales copy. I said, you know, here are some examples. Uh, here is some training. Go write squeeze page copy and sales page copy. Uh, and, write, and write an autoresponder series based around this. And so she did. She wrote squeeze page copy, sales page copy, and an autoresponder series that, you know, was a mini course and had sales messages in it. And um, so, so with that, you know, I, I probably had to review her copy three different times and I had to write, you know, the first headline that she wrote was awful. And so I was like, let's try this, you know, as a headline and, and then go tweak it. And, you know, so she did. Um, the other one went and set up the website, the, put all the copy on the website, you know, the squeeze page and the thank you page, set up the autoresponder series, hooked it up with Aweber, put all the emails inside of my Aweber account. He went and figured out how to use Aweber. Um, he, you know, put them all in and, and got the opt-ins working. Did you then, set up a, a separate Aweber account just for this project? Because I'm assuming you don't want them to have access to your other lists, right? Oh, no. No, you, uh, you have that much trust? So this is something that's kind of unique about the Philippines, but uh, um, culturally, it is, culturally, it. <laughs> they're just super, super honest in the Philippines. Um, my guys, they have access to my Aweber account. They have access to my PayPal accounts. They have my credit cards. I've, I've given them my credit cards. They have access to my bank account. They have access to all of my hosting accounts, all of them. Um, they have access to my email, my personal email. Um, the only thing they don't do is they don't pay themselves. Uh, because if they did, they would <laughs> well, how much each other made. Yeah. Right? Okay, well, that's some interesting stuff there. That I have some questions about that, but let's finish this case study first, and I'll yeah. ask you after that. Okay, so, so um, yeah, he sets, up, sets it up in my Aweber account, which I, I haven't even logged in to my Aweber account since we started doing it. I've, I've never even looked at it. Uh, in fact, the, the most difficult part of that was going back and figuring out what my Aweber login was, right? <laughs> um, and he, so then I, you know, I, I, and during this process, I'm sending them, I'm probably sending them emails, right? I, I, I mean, I know I'm sending them some emails or responding to their questions or whatever, but I, I never did anything beyond sending emails for any of this, right? Um, so I told him, go sign up for ClickBank and get us into ClickBank. So he goes and signs up and obviously he, he pays the, you know, I don't know, $50 fee or $75 fee with my credit card. And, you know, it gets rejected by ClickBank and he goes through the process of getting it approved. And so then, you know, one day I, I get an email from him saying everything's ready. Everything works, right? We can, we can start doing this. Okay, go, um, go start doing the stuff that Adam and Alan teach, which is 
um, writing articles. But also, I want to do some more. I want to do AdWords. So go set up the AdWords campaign for this. Well, you know, my, they, they've been trained on how to do AdWords because I've had them do AdWords in the past. So they knew exactly what to do to go set up the AdWords campaign for it. And I'll tell you that as, as this ran, you know, I get daily or weekly reports saying, here's how much money we spent on AdWords. Here's how much money we lost on it. Uh, here's what I think we should do to tweak it and make it better. Right? Mm -hmm. And, and I, 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 think, I think that the very first book we did is, is profitable on AdWords now. I don't think any of the other ones are. But you know, that, that's a process, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a process that I wasn't really involved in. Which is great. So uh, then they went out and and did all of the other kinds of marketing that should be done for sites like this. They you know they do the article marketing and they've done video marketing. You know submitted videos to Traffic Geyser and about our site promoting it. And they've done SEO, search engine optimization. And they've done uh, they've submitted the site to all the directories or not all the directories. They're in the process of submitting it to directories, directory submissions and social bookmarking and commenting on blogs and on forums and uh, building a mini net behind it and using Squidoo and MySpace and Facebook to build links and Delicious and Flickr and Furl and Spurl and you know what whatever else is out there any anything that we can do to bring traffic and to get links to boost our rankings they're doing it and um, so the the copy that was written the squeeze page copy and the sales page copy is is not great um, you know, I mean, I, I probably paid, it probably took her a week to write both of them and she makes, um, $400 a month. So it cost me probably, you know, a hundred bucks to have the copy and the autoresponder written, the autoresponder series written. Um, and it's not great, but it converts. <laughs> it it makes sales, right? So I, I, I now get, I now get emails from them. Well, besides, I, okay, so I get checks, right? I get a check from ClickBank every two weeks, <laughs> but I get emails from them saying, "Here's how much money we made, right? Here's, here's what I think we should do to increase this. Here's what I think we should do to improve sales. Here's what I think we should do to bring in more traffic. Here's what I think we should do to increase conversions, right? So, you know, uh, and I. You know, this is this is this one of you know one of the one of the businesses that I run. You know, we talked that I'm, I'm in lots of business, and I and I tell this story just so that people understand kind of what's possible here, right? Because I I think that that a lot of people in their um, outsourcing experience kind of don't even think this is even remotely close to being possible, right? And it, uh, you know, I'm I'm obviously telling you it's totally possible. Now, just you know. To make sure that to be totally fair, these two that did this have been with me for um, three and a half years and probably two years, right? So they've had a lot of training from me. However, I I do know that um, I have helped numerous people who have hired help have helped numerous people hire someone in the Philippines and who have joined. Adam and Alan's system and are implementing it, and I know they're succeeding with it, right? So th those were people that they hired that weren't with them for years, right? And, and this leads me to yeah, the obvious questions going on in my head with all this. So it takes a while to build trust um, with people to give away access to so many important things in your business. There, everything basically besides your bank account, even your PayPal account, which is you know they could pay themselves all the money out of your PayPal account if if, if you uh, didn't trust them unconditionally, right? So, um, what I'm curious about is a couple of things: uh, establishing trust, which I think you just start touching on there already. Uh, secondarily, you know you, you talk about the training now. Things you're having them do there, there's a huge variety of things. There, there are all the things that most of uh, internet marketers are doing now as solo business people, and that's the mistake they're making because they're trying to be the SEO person, the pay-per-click person, the sales copywriter, the ebook creator, you know, as well as managing the other aspects, uh, you know, autoresponders and so forth. So um, you're taking that entire problem that we have as individuals and giving it to two people in the Philippines to do. Which to me still seems like wow, that's a lot of role for just two people to do. So how do you 
I guess, train these people or find people of, of the caliber, A, to do this and get a result, but B, once they've figured out how to do this, why don't they go and leave you the way the Americans left you? Because they must see that you're doing this and they're basically running the entire business. Why don't they just stop and do it themselves? Um, so I, I think there were like three questions. There are right? three there. <laughs> um, okay, you can so choose which one you want to answer in what order. <laughs> um, okay, I, I, want to, I, want to, I want to remember these questions. One of them was talking about um, how, how do I train? Trust, okay. training, and... Uh, Trust, training, uh, loyalty. There's probably four. Trust, training, loyalty, and... Um, oh, my gosh. There was another really big one, and I had it. And I think this is so key. Oh, my gosh. I... Uh, oh, okay. I, I, know, I know the other one. It's wearing all the hats. Yes. Right? Trust, training, loyalty, and wearing the hats. Okay, so the hats... You know, most people, like you said, they're solopreneurs. They're trying to do this on their own, and they're trying to wear all the hats in the business, which you can't do. Um, and they never get a chance to work on the business. They're always working in the business, right? So for me, um, I have just found that it's easy enough to find other people that can do the work well enough that I'm able to step back and be the, the CEO of my business where I can work on the business, right? And, and so that kind of leads me to the training where now instead of being totally engrossed and I've got to get this done, I've got to get that done, uh, I don't have enough time to get stuff done, I can step back and say, this is already getting done for me. What else can I train them on, right? And now, you know, it's, it's like, so imagine, imagine that you didn't have you didn't have to worry about the success of your business. You didn't have to worry about the goals of your business, the overall outlook of your business. The only thing you had to do was make sure you got these six things done, right? And you have full time to do this because you're going to get paid to do it, right? That's what I have, right? I have other people. This is their full-time job is to do – your full-time job right now is to write this, this sales copy and this squeeze page copy and this ebook. Right? Or your full time job is to go and do article marketing and video marketing and directory submissions and, and you know, whatever, right? This is your full time job. Right? You don't have to worry about um, is this gonna succeed, right? Or the latest and greatest silver magic bullet product that came out, should I buy this? And you know, I'm not I'm I'm now I'm not spending the time to learn it, right? Because you know, this this is it's like I have you know, in this particular ebook business, it's like there are three of me. Right where I don't I don't have to do this because two other people are spending full time doing this forty hours a week, right? Um, okay, so that that answers the the CEO and and some of the training. So some of the training, you know, I give them training uh, where I'll say, you know, I want you to do it like this. I want you to do it like that. You know, I, I I've had a lot of experience in doing stuff. Or other times I will give them other people's training that I've bought. Uh, and and very often, so you know, here's what I find with that: if if I give them other people's training, I have to completely go through that training and filter it because you know a lot of it's not relevant, and they won't really understand that. They, you know, they don't they they know everything about my business, but they don't know how to run my business, right? Um, when NBC, so, you know, I, for example, is massive, right? So there's so many resources. Oh, it's huge. In NBC, so you could just oh, say, totally huge. "Here's the login. Go learn it and do it," right? Right. You, I mean, and that's, and that's kind of what I, where I, I was getting at with the CEO thing. You have to understand your business. Right? You, you've got to understand the goals of your business and, and what it takes to, to get it there and, and the processes and whatever. It's just that implementing it is, needs to be someone else's job because if, if you're the one implementing, you can't be the one understanding. Right? It's, it's too much for one person. And so with that, I can then you know, filter through products and say, okay, do this and this and this from this product, but, you know, these other parts aren't, aren't important, right? And, and I did that in NPC, right? We want to focus on these specific things. And also, here's some of my own personal knowledge uh, where I want to add to what they've done, right? And in anything that I do, this is what I do, where I, I filter through it. And, I, and so I'll give them a bunch of training uh, on things, you know, so, for example, article marketing, where I'll give them access to someone's product or a couple different products that I have 
and say, you know, in, in these things, I want you to go through this or and use this particular tool, but I want I, I want to make sure that we're, you know, I don't want you guys doing this and this and this because they're not relevant to our business. You know, this isn't this doesn't fit in. Um, and, and plus, you know, a lot of the information that's out there right now is given to people. It's given as if you, the CEO, are going to be the one implementing it. So there's a lot of information that I don't want my guys to have because it's just totally irrelevant to them, right? So, you know, I'll filter through them and say, do this and this and this, but ignore these parts, right? So that's the training. Um, okay, so then to talk about, let's see, uh, the other two were loyalty and... Loyalty and trust, tr I guess, go together. Tr but, so. Yeah, okay, so, and this is... Um, so like I said, these, these two have been with me for mm, three and a half years and two years. And I have, I have a full-time PHP programmer who's been with me for probably three years. And these people know as much about my business as I can possibly give them. And the reason is because in the Philippines... There is the, – they are loyal like the, it's culturally this way. They're loyal almost to it being a fault, like a, a, a cultural fault of theirs where they're too loyal. Um, where if they, if they had a better situation – you know, my guys could probably go out if, – if people knew who they were, probably go out and double their salary pretty quickly. But they won't. They, they won't do it because they're loyal to me. Right, and and you'll find this as you go and hire people that once you hire someone, they will stick with you permanently. Um, that's just how they are as a people. Um, and so, you know, that, and that's another another thing that really makes this work in the Philippines is anything you teach them, you never have to teach that again. And you know, so as you move on in your business over the years, you know, you teach one person something, they can then teach someone else that. Right? And, and in fact, very often what they'll do, in my experience, is they'll go out and improve upon what you taught them. This is how good they are in the Philippines. They, um, can I tell a, a story about this? Yeah, go ahead. So, so it, I, I think this was article marketing. Um, I don't remember. It's been about two years. And this kind of tells you a little bit of how distance I am from stuff. And I do this on purpose because this is um, – the goal, I think most people's goal with living, with doing this is to live the four-hour work week, right? Yeah. Um, I, I'm at that point where I live it, right? So I'm, I'm a little bit distanced from this. So this is why I say I think this was article marketing. Uh, I don't remember exactly. But so here's what happened. I, I gave my guys some training on how to do article marketing. And I said, you know, I want you to do this. I want you to do it once a week and do this and this and this and use this tool and whatever, right? And then I kind of forgot about it. And like six months later, I was I, I I specifically remember one day thinking, I wonder if that's still happening because it's super effective and I haven't heard anything about it. So I send an email and say, you know, is this still happening? Are you still doing this? He sends me an email back and says, oh yeah, I still do that. But I also went out and did some research and, and learned this and this and this. And I figured out that if we do this and this and this, in addition to what you taught me, it works much better. And also if we do it more often, than what you said, and then kind of taper it off again. It's it's more effective. <laughs> wow, and I'm, so I mean, obviously, you can you can imagine my response, you know, my reaction to that. Like, are you kidding me? You know, you you seriously took the initiative to go out and figure this out to do it better than what I told you to do. So, and and I tell this because not that this is like a one time experience, but this is. A, a common experience for me where they will actually take the initiative to go out and learn it better so that they can make sure that you're happy. Um, and I can, I can get into that cultural thing if, if you want me to, but well, so that, that's kind of like the loyalty thing where they're loyal to where they're going to stick with you for as long as you will, are willing to provide them a job. Right, and, and you know, I've, I've never outsourced to the Philippines, so I've got this sort of inbuilt skepticism until I actually experience it. Um, but you certainly paint a fantastic picture. Uh, if it's part of their culture, <laughs> you know, loyalty is incredible, and uh, also initiative. That's that's all. It's like having a you know, an employee like the, the uh, Evan Pagan would call it the star, right? Someone who, who takes 
ownership of the project and actually wants it to perform for their own recognition, not, not to impress you, not to make more money from you just because they take pride in the work and want to see a better result. So, you know, that's, oh, I that's can tell a, you story after story of that. Yeah, well, <laughs> let's, I want yeah, to get more practical. Will, with them. But, I've got some questions sure. regarding uh, a couple of things. Um, so I, I think you put together a good example there. So it's, you know, eBooks um, is a model you could take and then you've got two people running that business for you. You, you they basically have complete control over your business. Um, took a bit of while to train them. Took a bit of while to you know, work with them, get that experience. What uh, today? How many people are working for you? And feel free, you know, if you have to bypass these questions because they're too personal, that's fine. But you just say no, thank you, or <laughs> next question. <laughs> but um, how many people do you have working for you? And you know, how many active uh, money making projects are there in your business and even if you're willing to share what's your you know are, we, are you doing six multiple six figures seven figure what's the what's the income like from this um, I currently have seven people working for me full-time in the Philippines and they make anywhere between two hundred and six hundred dollars a month uh, so six hundred a month each yeah uh, six hundred a month um, is a very good PHP programmer who's been with me for a couple years uh, you know, then I have people halfway, like at 450, I have a guy who is a very good programmer and a very good graphic designer, which, you know, those two skills together are impossible to find in anyone anywhere in the world, even in the Philippines. Um, uh, and, you know, I have webmaster content writers, um, you know, people that just do random stuff, right? So seven people. Um, number of money-making projects that I have for me. Um, I could, one, I mean, I, I can count, I guess, kind of, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, like eight that I, <laughs> eight, eight that I know are profitable. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Um, and I, I, you know, I have a couple more that I, I don't. I'm not sure that they're profitable, so I don't know. <laughs> um, what was the other question? How much do you make out of all this? Oh, uh, it's it's high six figures. Okay. <laughs> I haven't. That's one that that's that's one of my what's one of my goal. One of my big goals is to break the seven figure uh, mark. <laughs> and yeah. I, I haven't done it yet. Well, that's still pretty amazing. <laughs> the results like that, considering. Uh, those people are doing everything for you. So, um, <laughs> what I'm curious then is, is let's, in terms of your actual communication with these people, are you just, they email you directly or is one of them acting as a project manager for you? Or how does that communication work? Um, so, one of them, um, one of them kind of acts as a project manager for me. And in, in part of, part of my business on, let's say, one, two, three, four of those, four of those. Uh, money-making products that I have. Uh, I have a partner on that, and he kind of acts as the project manager there. So, um, on the other stuff, you know, the one that the Filipino that acts as the project manager for me, he is um, a project manager, kind of, but he still does a lot of the work. Um, and he, I, I don't real, I, I've never really hired someone as a project manager, right? I guess I'm kind of not to that point in my business and my knowledge and in my experience. So, okay, so it's it's pretty much uh, email communication, and that would be the biggest role you have with your business. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, email email communication and and using a project management system. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh, I guess the the next logical question for this is the, the, a person listening to this call is thinking, just as I have been thinking. Right, I want to do this too. I want to get someone that I'm comfortable enough to share all my details with that they well and truly can uh, implement the system without me. Um, you know, I, I've, I've already purchased Niche Profit Classroom. I've already purchased Paperclip Classroom, Affiliate Classroom, all the different products. I've, I've joined maybe a Frank Kern product or an Evan Pagan product or a, um, any of the countless systems out there that are you know, teaching how to make money, or maybe I haven't yet, and I already have my own, or I just want to start doing something I know that's working. And I love what you talked about with the Philippines. Uh, the Filipinos seem to be, they have a lot of benefits over the other types of outsourcing. Um, you know, paying $200 for a full-time employee just to start with seems reasonable. 
uh, you know, four hundred dollars, something like that. Uh, that's definitely a good start. How would you recommend to a person entering this world to start? What's step one? Um, do you want Do you want me to give you how I do it, or you want me to give you a bunch of options? Uh, well, let's let's say you know you you obviously teach this to other people. Well, what do you teach? Okay, so there's a, there's a couple different options where you can do this, and I'm gonna, I'm going to give you these because how I do it is has changed somewhat. So. Okay. Um, when I started doing this, I started with Agents of Value, Agent, agentsofvalue.com. They're an American company. They have offices in the Philippines where they, they go out and recruit Filipinos to work for Americans. And so then you pay this American company, Agents of Value, and they pay the Filipino. They bring them into the office every day. They provide them a computer and internet access. And um, it, it, it was good when I started it. Um, it's it's not as good anymore. That's all I'm going to say. So then, so moving beyond that, here are a couple other options. There, there's a bunch of websites where you can go and and try and hire someone. I'm going to preface this with saying I have never personally succeeded at hiring someone off of one of these, but I do have someone working for me who someone else hired off of one of these. Someone we've talked about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So here, here are options of of these, um, and I'm 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 sure I'm going to mess these up, but there's like ph.jobstreet.com or uh, jobsonline.com.ph I think, or um, Craigslist Manila.craigslist.com, uh, and and I th I think that Craigslist has actually been a really good one in the past up until. And again, I, I've never succeeded at this, so I don't know this firsthand. But here, but what people have been telling me recently is that uh, a couple months ago, and since starting a couple months ago, Craigslist started deleting all the postings from American companies saying, you know, come work for me, work from home, whatever. Um, so I'm not sure that Craigslist is still a, a valid option for this. Um, VA4U.com. Uh, I know there are a couple others. I'm just not thinking of them off the top of my head right now. So that's th I'm, I'm giving you those options because what I'm about to tell you then about how I do this um, has special circumstances around it now. So um, the place where I hire people is bestjobs.ph. Do you want me to go into a specific example of how I hire people? Yeah, yeah, that's definitely beneficial. Go for it. Okay, so. Um, I, I'm actually going to go there and show you a little bit about it if you want to do this. And obviously, if you know people are doing this, listening to this, you're probably going to see different stuff than what I'm seeing. But I, I, it's important that you see um, what I do when I go here because this took me – well, it took me a long time to find this site, number one. And then it took me a, a, a little bit to figure out how to use it. Uh, so bestjobs.ph. On the left side, there are three orange headers. There's job seekers, employers, and resources. And under employers – we're going to go to the resume search. Important that we're doing a resume search here, not a job search. People often seem to get confused there. So we're going to the resume search. Mm -hmm. On this page, you need to change the resume date from any to be a month or less. And what I found was if I don't change it, I'm getting resumes, results from people who already have jobs and they're not even responding to my, mm. to my requests because they're loyal to their jobs, right? Right. Okay, so then, um, and I'm going to give you a little bit more of my experience here with this. What I'm going to search for now is English writer. And the reason I'm searching for English writer is because my experience is that most people trying to implement, you know, one of these products that you just talked about, the number one thing that will matter in your success in doing this is how, how well does your person speak English. Right. right. Now, just just as a as a um, kind of a disclaimer, there everyone in the Philippines speaks English. Not everyone, but you know you know it's so 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 common. Uh, they're very very Americanized, um, and so you know SEO can be taught, and FTP can be taught, and um, article marketing can be taught. You're not going to teach someone English. Mm. You know you can, but it's just not worth it, right? So yeah. that's that's the single single most important qualification. Uh, um, let me give you two. Contrary examples of that, however, if you're hiring a programmer or a graphic designer, it's less important. 
Okay. Okay. So, um, and I'm just typing English writer into the keywords section of this form. In the right? keyword, yep. and then we're going to click search. So it's nationwide and abroad, category any, resume a month or less, right to work any, and then keywords English writer. Right. Okay, so um, as we look at this, number one, notice there are almost 2,000 resumes here for this. Number two, notice this is all in English, mm. right? Number three, read some of these descriptions that the, that the Filipinos are writing who are putting their resumes here. Read the descriptions about uh, what, what they're saying about themselves, mm. right? Very good English. Um, good at expressing it, themselves. Exactly. It's very good. It's, um, you know, the Philippines was like a, an American colony, some, like an American colony for for some time after World War II. And I, I, I don't know the total history. I guess the United States kind of saved the Philippines in World War II, whatever. So they, they really, really like the Western culture. And so they do a really, specifically in the Philippines, they do a really good job of, of learning English and learning it really well. So let's, let's look at some of these. So I'm, I'm just going to look at number one, article writer, English writer, web content writer, writer, right? Sounds like someone I'd want to hire, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, so here there are a couple things specifically that we're looking for here that I want to sh- point out to you. Number one, they have a bachelor's degree in information technology. Everyone you find will have a bachelor's degree. And this is you know not a high school degree. This is really a bachelor's degree. They're very, very well educated there. Number two, five to nine years of experience. That always means experience outside of college, after college, right? So that's a lot of experience. Um, they currently have em- employment, um, temporary employment, and... I actually think I've seen this resume a couple times before, which probably means this person, it, their temporary employment isn't up, so they're not accepting a job, and that's why their, their resume continues to pop up here all the time. Because right. uh, so, they, they're probably not even responding to inquiries. You know, My guess is this person gets a couple inquiries every day offering them a job. Mm-hmm. Right? And here's why. So the next one, salary expectations, 15000 Well, that is Filipino pesos per month. That's that's what this always is. It's always monthly amount. Sometimes you'll see a U.S. dollar amount, but mostly it's Filipino pesos per month. So let me tell you, just explain what that is. I'm going to bring up a calculator here. The current conversion rate uh, is 47 pesos to one U.S. dollar, uh, or about that. So if you divide 15,000 by 47, that is 319 dollars per month that they're asking for. So that's a, the salary expectation is a monthly. Monthly, so you would you know you would convert that to, to Australian. Gosh, I don't even know your currency, man. Dollars. <laughs> Australian dollars. Do- dollars, John. Right. <laughs> right, dollars. <laughs> I, I did know it was dollars. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, you go figure out what the what the conversion rate is to Australian dollars and It'd divide. Be slightly yeah. higher, I'd say, but not too much. We're about right. 80, 80 U.S. at the moment. So, okay. So um, you notice that they're looking for either full-time, part-time, or home-based work. They're in Manila, which is the biggest city in the Philippines. Uh, English level, fluent, all the way at the bottom, fluent, and Filipino native, obviously. Um, so, you know, this is a I mean, pretty good person here, right? And $320 a month, uh, pretty dang good, right? So I'm just going to look at one more of these just to kind of see what exists here. When I'm going to click back and maybe I'm going to scroll down. Okay, number five, I'm looking at this. Content writer, article writer, SEO writer. Looks like they probably know what they're doing, you know, in, in terms of working for an American probably. Uh, again, bachelor's degree, two years of experience, unemployed. Um, my guess is this guy is probably going to get a job pretty quickly. Um, salary expectations, negotiable. Okay, this is important. Um when everything is negotiable, and I'm going to tell a quick story about just what I mean by that. So the guy that I talked about earlier about uh, who, who I pay $450 a month, a good programmer and graphic designer, I really wanted to hire him. And we worked out all the details of employment except for the salary. And I said, how much do you want to make? And he said, $1,100 a month. And I said, okay, I will go find someone else. Because I know that for that much, I can hire two or three people, Right. Right. He said, wait, wait, how much do you want to pay me? I said, 450 He said, okay. Right. So when they say negotiable, it really means negotiable. Yeah, that's pretty right. negotiable. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, let, me, let me stop you there too because this is – I have to ask this question every outsourcing call I do just because I know this, this irks a few people and I want to set their mind at ease. 
this sort of this, money it can give the feeling that we're taking advantage of these people. I don't see that as that, but some people do. What's your, your take on that? Um, go try it and see what kind of emails you get from them. See, see how often they write, thank you so much for giving me a job. Right? Um, in fact, there was a post on the Warrior Forum. Um, I, I think, I, I think this, this, this post is still is probably four or five months old and it's still in the top five most active posts on the Warrior Forum um, where someone said, is this, is this ethical? Right? And there's like, I don't know, 10, 20 pages of posts of people saying yes or no, right? And most people say yes. Well, at one point, um, I know that a person from the Philippines came on and said, I am so-and-so, I'm from the Philippines. I just want to thank people like John Jonas for giving us jobs. It's hard to find a job here in the Philippines, and it's hard to find a stable job here in the Philippines. And so anybody, anytime we can get a job, we are thankful for that job. So, you know, I mean, it, it, there are still people out there who will say this is unethical no matter how you look at it, no matter what you say, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. You know, go talk to someone over there and see how they feel about it. See if they feel it's unethical, right? Because I guarantee you they don't. So. Okay, cool. Let's move on. Next. Okay, so I, uh, you know, I, I think you get the idea of what's available in terms of like English writer, right? right. Let's go back to the resume search again. And we'll just do this one more time. Uh, again, a month or less. This time we're going to search PHP programmer. Um, and I'm going to do this and I'm going to preface this with most people do not need a PHP programmer, right? You know, people, people who have never hired a programmer don't kind of don't understand what they do or don't, you know, if you're not a programmer, maybe you're concerned or confused or whatever. I'm just showing you this so that if, if you know that you need a programmer, I want to show you what exists, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scroll down here a little bit just to see what we can find. I mean, if you read these titles, PHP developer, programmer, Joomla developer, web developer, the fourth one, this, is, this one's interesting, web developer, PHP developer, WordPress, Joomla, right? I mean, that, those, are, those are the things that, that we internet marketers use, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to look at him and see what he is. Just to remind people, we're on uh, bestjobs.php. If you haven't done a search yet, that's what we're searching. Bestjobs.ph. Ph, sorry. <laughs> he not, said not, PHP not PH. from... This yeah. dot Philippines. That's what the dot ph is for. That's what dot ph is, right? Um, okay, so then, so then on this one, you, I mean, if you look at this guy's resume, he's done a lot of stuff. Also, you notice ten years or more, he's currently self-employed and his says salary negotiable. My guess is you're not going to be able to hire this dude for um, less than a thousand dollars a month, which is super, super expensive in the Philippines, right? Uh, but he has ten years of experience. Um, crazy, crazy good programmer, probably, right? So I'm going to go back and look at another one. Um, I'll actually tell you this, tell you a story about. Um, okay, so let me see. I clicked on one that says PHP, comma MySQL programmer slash developer. Mm -hmm. Seven. Um, five to nine years of experience, bachelor's degree, eighteen to twenty thousand pesos per month. You know how much that is? Eighteen thousand. Divided by 47 is 380 US dollars per month. Five to nine years of experience. This is a good programmer. Right? And in general, that's how you can tell how good someone is, how much experience they have. The more experience, the better they are. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a blanket statement. Um, but that's crazy. You know? Mm. So, and obviously, you'd have to test them. I mean, all things yeah, yeah. said and done that looks good so far. Right. Um, and, and um, gosh, I can't remember. Oh, my gosh. Someone, Mark, Mark Ling, the other day, gave me a really good way to test people. Oh, my gosh, I cannot think of it. But I, if, if someone needs to know how to test people, I can tell you. I can find it and tell you later. So, um, I mean, that, this is crazy cheap, right? Mm -hmm. And this is, this is for a full-time programmer. I'll tell you that... Um, I don't, I don't think this is too personal, but I know that Adam and Alan, were, they were paying someone in the U.S. $75 an hour to, to develop their niche profit classroom site. And they came to me and I, I helped them hire a programmer, a PHP programmer, to redo their site. 
he cost them $500 a month. And I'm pretty sure that he did it in less than a month. Yeah, that's pretty incredible. It's crazy. Mm. So, Okay, so this, this is where I have hired people in the past. Here's the problem. So if you click on any of these resumes and scroll down, you don't get their contact information. To access the full details of the candidate, please log into the control panel first. Click on that control panel. You don't have a username and password. If you haven't registered for this business yet, please click here. What does it tell you when you click here? It tells me... We regret to last... inform you employer registrations are not currently allowed from your location. Sorry for the inconvenience cost. <laughs> okay, so here's the problem. And this is, why, this is why I said, this is why I asked you in the beginning, you want to know how to hire people or how I hire people? A couple months ago, they decided that they don't want my customers hiring people anymore. Um, that must have been scary. I, I don't have a... And, it, 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 and that was kind of part of it. I, I'm not going to get into the full details of it. They're, they're actually okay with us hiring them, but they're not okay with people signing up, right? And it, it doesn't make sense. It, it, it doesn't... It's not explicable... I can't explain it, right? Because everyone says, "Well, this doesn't make any sense." You know, why would they turn down money for getting access to their site, right? Well, I don't, I can't explain it, right? What I can tell you is that right now, the only way that I know of to get access to this is through my system, or fly we, to the Philippines, right? Or fly to the Philippines, yeah. right? <laughs> um, we have access to it. We have worked this out with them where we provide limited access to this where you can contact the people that you that you can find in here through my site and if someone else out there can find another way of doing it I would love to hear it <laughs> if, if someone can find another way to get access to get a new account please let me know so um, but I'm, I'm assuming that this site bestjob.ph in, in on the ground in Philippines has quite a bit of traction within the you know the outsourcing community so everyone in the Philippines says you know I need to get some work uh, you know Americans and you know people from Australia the UK etc are hiring but um, where's the best place to go find these employers and they say I'll oh, go to bestjobs.ph because that's where you know you find good employers um, and then they've gone and shut it down so you know, don't you I'm just curious two things how did you negotiate this special arrangement and secondarily is this going to damage the site's uh, you know, use over time? Like, are there going to be less uh, good people available there because of this restriction? Um, I I don't know if it's going to change it. Um, how do we do this with them? A long, 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 difficult process. <laughs> That's what I can tell. It was. Okay. It took us probably two months of. Uh, I I don't. You know, it doesn't it doesn't make sense why they would shut it down. The process of doing this didn't make sense either. Hmm. So it's like um, you know you could set your own one up, but it's kind of like eBay. Everyone already goes there, so there's not much point creating a separate okay. one. Well, actually, we did. Okay. Here's, let me let me tell you what. And uh, now, since you mentioned it, we I haven't told anybody this yet because we just did this. We just launched this in the Philippines um, two weeks ago, so it's not it's not there yet. And I don't I don't think that people will hear this for a little bit of time because it's not ready for people to be hiring people off of this yet. Right. Uh, but we actually just started onlinejobs.ph where we are recruiting people specifically to work who are looking to work online in the Philippines. Because best jobs, that's not that's not what their goal is. Right. right? Their goal is to provide they want Filipino companies hiring Filipino workers in the Philippines. Ah, uh, okay. So there's some sort of ethos decision for them deciding to shut that down. Yeah. It, right. And it's really weird. They're not even the owners aren't even Filipino. I don't know what. Okay. I, I don't. Right. It, it, okay. Right. It doesn't make sense. So we we actually we created onlinejobs.ph and have been we are recruiting Filipinos who are specifically looking to work online. For you know, a, a, an American, an Australian, a Canadian, a UK company, right? And so, and and so, par as part of them signing up, um, we're actually filtering a lot of the garbage that they do when they when they um, post their resumes to make it 
easier and more helpful to employers looking to hire someone. Mm. So online jobs is is uh, very soon. It's not today. Today it's not available. Although when people are listening to this, it probably will be. Um, uh, another really really good option for hiring people in the Philippines and. Um, you know, there, there's it. It costs it costs money to join online jobs to get access to the resumes. Again, uh, again, my my customers at my the the site where I will talk about it. I guess uh, they'll get access to online jobs for free. So, well, that's probably a good time for us to introduce this. So, um, obviously, this is your thing, John. It's pretty clear that you're the guy to you know go to for outsourcing to the Philippines. Um, what exactly do you help people with? Like, what's what's your role? So I um, number one, I, I teach all this stuff, and I and I, and I, I teach more. Uh, you know, there's there's so much more that I teach about. You know, that we didn't cover. You know, tips and tricks, and how I pay them, and how I deal with them, and the software I use to, you know, to provide daily feedback and and whatever. Um, uh, how the hiring process beyond what I just showed you in best jobs, like what do I do? Because there's way more that you need to do in order to hire someone. Uh, you know, I teach all that stuff, right? That that's a small part of what I do. The really big thing is, um, I get a phone call one day from a from a friend who I just helped him hire someone, and he says he's kind of frantic, and he says, "John, I just hired this guy, and he just instant messaged me and says, "Sir, I completed the task you gave me. What do you want me to do for the other seven and a half hours today?" And my my friend was like, I got stuff for him to do, but um, it's gonna take me like three hours to train him, and I don't have three hours to train him on. This. It was it was kind of funny, funny conversation. Um, and so I, you know, I, this this like really set off another. You know, I have all these eye opening moments for myself, right? This was another one. I I had this training that he needed. I I had trained my guys on how to do this, and so I gave him my training and made it easy for him. And and this was kind of when I realized that people needed the trainings that I've given to my guys. Um, you know, now that you know how to hire someone, the next big, big problem is how do I train this person? So that's what I do. Um, I train your Filipinos for you so that you don't have to. Um, and and it. Do you, do you want me to talk about how it works? Yeah, or? I'm curious. Like, do you you like someone would get a bunch of videos that you then give to your Filipinos that you hire? Is that how it works? Or it's actually a little bit easier than that. So okay. what we did was I, I created created a it's it's a membership site where um, it it costs ninety seven dollars per month and the first month you get access to all of the training for you. How do you hire someone in the Philippines, right? What what are the things that you need to do to manage them? Um, the first month is designed for you. Every month after that and actually part of the first month is training given to your Filipino on how to implement a specific tactic. And you and you get you get to pick, you know, which ones you want. Um, but, you know, I will train your guys on how to do AdWords correctly, right? How to run your AdWords campaign correctly. Because I don't want to run my AdWords campaign, right? Or I'll teach them how to properly do article marketing or how to do video marketing or how to use Squidoo or MySpace or Facebook or how to do directory submissions, or and and every month you you'll get one or two or three of these things, so that, and and actually you well you get it, but really what we did was we licensed a project management system, and you give the guy that you hire access to your account in the project management system, and then we deliver these trainings inside of the project management system. So if you want to add to it. Add to it. It's there in the project manager system. The next time you hire someone, it's already there. You don't have to do anything with it, right? So every month it automatically shows up. Your guy in the Philippines logs in. He gets the new training. He starts implementing it for you, right? So it's it's we took it I, I we took it a step further than than saying here are these videos. Give these to your guy. We said give your guy access one time and he'll get all these videos, right? And and it's you know videos and audios and PDFs and screenshots and whatever you know training training it's the training that I've given to my guys to be able to go out and and do that um, do the ebook business for me it's the training that I've given to my guys that let them 
you know, you and I talked about this before, but you know, I have another website that makes me ten to fifteen thousand dollars a month. Um, it's it's the same training that I gave to him to be able to do that, right? So, and and most of this training is is based around the stuff that you should be doing, but you know, requires ongoing work, a, a traffic generation, and SEO, and um, marketing your business, right? That's what that's what most of this training is based around. The stuff that um, you should be doing in your business, but you're not, right? Um, I'm not going to teach you guys how to run your business because I don't know how to run your business, right? Every, everyone's business is different. So, and and that, you know, we talked about that's your job is to know how to run your business. So that's you know, in a in a nutshell, that's what I do. I I'll teach you how to how exactly how to do this correctly, how to hire people, and then I'll train your guys for you. All right, that sounds pretty awesome, uh, especially for those people who are well and truly adopting uh, the online business model and, and understand the need to do all these things, which I think is most people as they start developing their internet business. So that's very appealing. Uh, probably a good time to wrap it up, John. I think the best place is where do we uh, get uh, information about this membership service that you offer? Um, so the, the, the website is replacemyself.com. And if you want to help out Yarrow, I guess you go to replacemyself.com slash Yarrow, and that'll be – we'll set you up with an affiliate link there. And um, that, that will – you know, people can go there and, and join, and you'll get, you'll get a, a couple more pieces of training. In fact, if you, if you want to go there and, and opt in or, or – you know, I, I actually give another free audio that people can listen to that will explain quite a bit more. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we didn't cover today, and then, but there you can you can join and, um, you know, get going with this. So, okay, so that's again, replacemyself.com forward slash y a r o, correct? Right, okay. right. And the reason I named it replace myself was because that's that was what I had done. I you know I I had replaced myself in my business numerous times to the point where I didn't have anything to do anymore, and that was my goal with helping other people help you. Replace yourself. Replace me in my business, right? Great concept. Great, very appealing right now. I think for everyone. So that's fantastic, John. Um, yeah, I just can say great stuff you revealed in this in this interview. Uh, I think you really broke down how to do it as well as how you're doing it, which I think was what I was really curious about. Um, I'm familiar with outsourcing, but not to the not to the level you're doing it and also specifically to the Philippines. So that was really useful. I've, I've been telling people to go to Craigslist Manila as a starting point, but now I know a lot more. So I do appreciate you sharing that with me as well as everyone who is listening to this call. And uh, I'll say it one more time. If you are interested in working with um, John's materials and, and following in his footsteps, I guess, best way to put it, and, and replace yourself and your business, head to replacemyself.com forward slash Y-A-R-O. And... Uh, Get some more information there from John and, and begin this process. So, John, thanks very much for that. Um, yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. It's it's been really good. Yeah, en enjoy the uh, the rest of your day, whatever you're doing, given you don't have any work to do. So, <laughs> <laughs> hanging out with your family. So, thank you again, John. Speak thank you. Soon. Talk to you later. Bye.